What's up, guys? What? Uh, uh. What's up guys, Lou here, back with another video, and today I've got something that I think you're going to be interested in. If you've been following my channel recently, then you know I've done a couple of videos about the Apple Watch. I did an unboxing of this Apple Watch right here, which is the standard version, the non-sport, featuring a higher quality or more expensive materials. But I also did a video before that, a scratch test on this component here, which is the glass from the Apple Watch Sport. It's called Ion X, and it's not nearly as hard as pure sapphire. Apparently, up until this point, sapphire crystals have been of a certain shape and a certain style for many traditional watches. So I went out and did a little bit of my own research. I even went to a jewelry store and bought a watch. So in front of me here, I have a Tissot watch. Now I've been told that most, if not all, Tissot watches feature sapphire crystals. This one, for example, if you turn it around and look at the back, you will see it is branded as stainless steel, water resistant, and sapphire crystal. So a legit 100% sapphire crystal on this watch. I wanted to compare that to the sapphire crystal that exists on the Apple Watch. Maybe Apple was using some unique material or some kind of a process to get the sapphire in the shape that it's in on the standard Apple Watch. Or maybe that they weren't necessarily using the kind of sapphire crystal that we're used to. This, my friends, is a diamond tester. This tests the conductivity of various materials. It's used mostly for evaluating jewelry and fine stones like diamonds, hence the name, but it actually works perfectly fine on materials like sapphire as well. Mineral glass will have no effect on this scale when tested when you touch this probe against it, whereas sapphire or materials like it, diamond, so on and so forth, which are very conductive materials, will have a different type of readout. It will go as far as seven or eight on this scale, depending on the sensitivity. So this is a definitive test for determining whether or not you are dealing with a sapphire crystal on a watch. You have to have your hand on this metallic portion on the other side of the diamond tester, and you also need to be holding the object that you're testing because it's actually your body that will complete the circuit and allow for the test to be accurate. So in front of me here, I have various devices. I have my phone, I have the Apple Watch, the more expensive Apple Watch. I have uh, the glass from the Apple Watch Sport right here. I have that Tissot that I told you I purchased with actual verified sapphire glass, sapphire crystal, sorry, on the front. And then I have the LG G Watch R on the far left. So we're gonna go ahead and test all of these different surfaces so we can find out once and for all if Apple is using legitimate sapphire crystal in the more expensive Apple Watch. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Diamond Selector 2. How serious does that sound? Now you will need to set the sensitivity. This is built in for various sizes of diamond stones that you might be testing. In this case, I'll put a relatively low sensitivity on there. It'll either react and you'll see the meter go up the scale or it won't at all. So let's start with the G Watch R from LG. So you have no reaction here at all. So we know immediately based on this test and the conductivity of this material that we are dealing with glass. Now we can expect a similar readout from the iPhone 6. Exact same effect. Now if I go ahead and test the glass from the Apple Watch Sport, once again, glass. No reaction at all, certainly not sapphire or any kind of special material. So let's go ahead and move on to the critical stuff. Here I've got the Tissot watch, traditional style watch that I purchased for about $300 with a verified sapphire crystal. Upon touching it, you'll see the meter jump all the way up. So the sensitivity setting that I have is presuming that this is diamond because it is a really big surface of material and I have the sensitivity set for that kind of reaction. Now, lastly, we have the Apple Watch, which many have disputed whether or not it's legitimate, traditional watch style sapphire because of the shape of it and, and the unusual manufacturing process that it would probably take to make it. Here's the test. 
And what you'll see is it gets pretty high, flashing up to an eight. It becomes obvious that Apple is certainly using Sapphire Crystal here. We're seeing something fairly innovative here from Apple in their manufacturing process that they were capable of producing something so unusual in the watch world, a sapphire crystal in this particular shape with this rounded edge. Believe it or not, the production of sapphire crystals for watches is a fairly complicated thing. I will drop some links in the description to describe and explain more. And once you do some reading or a little bit of research, you'll understand why this is such an achievement and why there were so many people doubting that it could actually be that material given the current production methods for sapphire crystal for watches. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. Also, share it with your friends, anybody who's wondering, asking questions, trying to decide between the Apple Watch Sport or the Apple Watch, the next step up. I can tell you this is stainless steel and sapphire, just as they say, and this is one of the hardest materials on the planet. So it should be incredibly resistant to scratches or at least as resistant as we could ask for. This is a great material. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode. Later guys.